The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. So, uh, hi everyone. My name is Shaopo, and we are going to present on light propagation in sub wavelength modulated media. So uh, this is the outline of our presentation. I will first uh, show you some of the basic concepts and Calpes will present some of, the, some of our simulation results. So we will start with photonic crystal. And basically, photonic crystal are artificial medias with periodic index contrast. And the periodicity and the spacing will determine the relevant light frequency. And because of this photonic crystal, uh, uh, we can actually manipulate the light in many uh, many interesting ways that we will show you uh, later in the presentation. So to, to, to understand the light propagation in photonic crystal, we have to uh, come back to this Maxwell equation, which describes the light propagation uh, in dielectric media. And if we expand, the, if we express the field in a set of uh, uh, harmonic modes, we can actually reduce the equation to a uh, eigenvalue problem with Hermitian operator. Uh, and some of the important properties of these harmonic modes are omega square is real and positive, and uh, they are orthogonal, and uh, also they are scale invariance, means that uh, one result, one solution in one scale can be, uh, can be fit to other solutions in other scales as well. And also in periodic uh, dielectric medium, we know that it must satisfy the uh, Bloch condition also. So uh, it means that uh, we can choose the computational domain in one unit cell of the uh, infinite uh, large uh, crystal. And you can just do the computation models in one unit cell, and we can understand the whole crystal. And basically, uh, we will use FDTD in our uh, this project and basically it means finite difference time domain method and is widely used in computation models to understand the interaction of the electromagnetic uh, uh, inter electromagnetic wave in the dielectric medium and one of the good things about this method is it can uh, it can compute the response of a linear system at many frequency with a single combination and basically we just by using for transform the response of a single pulse. And this is uh, the approach we use for the FDTD. Basically, we try to discretize the Maxwell equation and some boundary condition and we just time matching the field to obtain the time response. Uh, this showed some of the equations and also the discretized Maxwell curve equation and this this actually uh, is, is uh, one way we discretize the uh, uh, the Maxwell equation and basically the the field are separated in uh, temporarily uh, temporal domain in half half of the time step and as well as in the special domain they are separated in half grip cell. So the center difference uh, in both time and space domain is are uh, used to approximate the uh, electromagnetic wave in the grid in each grid. Yeah, then I will pass to Kalpesh for some of our simulation result. Thanks, Shapo. Uh, now, in this part, I will uh, uh, explain you some. Uh, uh, I will give you some of the simulation result, and using this simulation result, I will try to explain why photonic crystal are quite useful and what type of property they have, and uh, uh, basically uh, how we can apply them in a real life application. 
So for this uh, study, we have considered uh, uh, this type of uh, 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 rod structure where we have a, a circular rod of aluminum uh, which are uh, placed at the uh, constant distance. Uh, they have constant spacing. So we can, uh, while simulating, we can just consider that uh, top view means a cross section along the, uh, one cross section and we can study their property. So for the sim uh, simu FDTD simulation, we have used a numerical software, which is a, a demo version of that numerical software. So in that simulation software, we have applied, means basically uh, we apply a short, uh, short pulse. So basically, uh, which corresponds to a combination of many uh, various frequencies. So <clears throat> we apply that so uh, short pulse to our structure and uh, we uh, time step the simulation. So basically, we uh, calculate its uh, time, time response. So uh, after the time, from that time response, we uh, tr uh, do the Fourier transform and uh, get its uh, frequency response. Now, as the uh, this uh, structure is a, it is a finite structure, and uh, we assume that our uh, photonic crystal is an infinite uh, in dimension. We need to uh, bound over the, uh, this structure using a perfectly matched layer. Uh, basically, what perfectly matched layer does is uh, it absorbs the light uh, in a such a way that there is no reflection at the boundary. Okay, so uh, in this simulation, we can see that uh, at one particular frequency uh, near this frequency, uh, uh, we can see uh, that. Uh, there is a uh, propagation of the light, means we can see the field distribution along the whole photonic crystal. And uh, in this region, uh, there is no field propagation uh, in the photonic crystal. So, okay, basically we will show you some video. Yeah. So this is the time domain behavior. So here we can see that, that uh, incident pulse is a plane wave uh, along the y direction. So uh, at this particular frequency, we can see that pulse is, uh, uh, that uh, electromagnetic wave is, is uh, able to propagate through the crystal. Now, uh, this is uh, quite su surprising thing that uh, even though the damage uh, spacing between the two crystal, which act as a scatterer, is a much uh, quite less than lambda. So there are multiple scatter, even though we are getting a quite good uh, wave propagation. And uh, in this case, we can see that uh, it act, uh, it is uh, not allowing, it doesn't allow that wave to propagate through the crystal. So basically it acts as a mirror. Now, uh, the next thing comes is that uh, when we have to design a photonic crystal, we have to understand like at what frequency, uh, uh, how it will behave. So that uh, behavior can we can understand by using a dispersion diagram. Uh, this dispersion diagram we calculated using this same numerical software. So to calculate this dispersion diagram, we just consider a single uh, unit of that photonic crystal, which is a, uh, and uh, beyond that, uh, unit, the field will be, uh, means the field will be periodic. So we can bound that, uh, so we can bound that uh, uh, structure using a block boundary condition. So basically block boundary condition will specify that what mode we are uh, interested to uh, excite in the structure. So uh, we use that block boundary condition and we excite the uh, 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 field using our dipole source. So, and uh, we calculate uh, that field uh, a temporal response using uh, various monitors inside the structure. And uh, using the Fourier transform, we can see that what frequency can exist in the structure at for a given mode. So, basically, it will give us the idea about uh, the behavior of the given photonic crystal. Now, uh, we may as uh, there may be uh, another thing is like uh, uh, what are the possible values of uh, that 
wave vector that we have to take means uh, like in real uh, uh, real wave propagation like in air we can have an infinite number of k values and for infinite yeah but in this case we can see that our uh, use from block uh, theorem we can see that our response has this type of form and uh, if we take uh, some value k uh, which is a uh, which which has a this type of form so basically this ko and k will have similar mode profile and when we have similar mode profile we will get the similar uh, uh, same frequency values for that mode so uh, yeah so uh, so basically uh, we can reduce uh, we can uh, limit our the values of k and we can calculate that uh, means we can get this uh, value of k from this brillonium zone so for different type of crystal we have uh, we can have a different brillonium zone uh now uh yeah now in the previous case uh uh, uh we showed you that uh, at one at certain frequency we uh, we will not get the propagation of wave it will act as a mirror but uh, the uh now if we introduce some uh, type of defect in that photonic crystal we can allow the light to propagate through that uh, structure like in this case uh we change the uh, di uh radius of the uh, certain uh diameter of the rods in one particular uh, uh location like uh, in this case we created a line defect in that photonic crystal and uh, we will see that how this structure will behave so using this fdtd simulation we can see that uh, uh initially it wasn't able to uh, allow means it didn't allow the wave propagation but uh, when where we have this uh, defect it is allowing means it allows the light to propagate and it acts as a wave guide so basically uh when we have uh when we apply a uh, frequency which is in the band pass region and we introduce a defect in a certain way we can control the uh, propagation of light and uh, in that way we can control the flow of light and the second example uh, which we simulated is uh, uh, from the paper uh, in which they use a fo uh, photonic crystal to focus a light and they are using it as a green lens so to use them as as a green lens uh, basically they use uh, specially modulated uh, spacing of a same material which is a aluminum and uh, in the center as in this figure you can see that in the center the spacing between the rod is uh, low and as we go uh, away from the center we are increasing the spacing and uh, yeah so in this simulation also we uh, use a uh, uh, broad, broad pulse and uh, yeah uh, at some uh, certain frequency range we can see that uh, uh, we are applying a pulse uh, at the uh, at this side and as it passes through the photonic crystal it is reduces the size of the uh, it reduces the size of the beam and uh, we can get a focusing effect as shown in this uh, simulation re result yeah uh now again coming back to this fdtd uh basically what fdtd uh, does is it discretizes the equation and uh, uh that discrete can uh, write that uh, algebraic in the algebraic form and uh, uh if we know the initial condition we can do the time uh, time matching and we can find the solution in the space and as well as for all the time for example we can consider this bundy uh, example which is a simple wave propagation equation so if we use a taylor approximation we can represent differential equation in a differential equation form and uh, for differential equation form 
we can see that we can uh, get the next time uh, field value using uh, 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 all the values available at one time step uh, before. So basically, this example shows uh, using one D example how we calculated how the wave propagates with a time. Yeah, and this uh, is lattice, which is used for that electromagnetic calculation. Yeah, so in summary, we can say that uh, photonic crystal have uh, various inter interesting properties, and that can be used to control the behavior of light at uh, micro and nano scale. And uh, this characterization requires uh, use of numerical techniques such as FDTD. And uh, we are thankful to Satoshi, uh, who is our mentor for this project. Yes. Any question?